Hi guys, in this video we'll look at conformations of cyclohexanes. Now there are, are of course other sized rings, other sized hydrocarbon rings, as we showed in a previous video, and as we saw in the nomenclature video. But with conformations we typically at the introductory level focus on cyclohexanes. They do tend to be one of the most common size hydrocarbon rings. In looking at conform conformations of cyclohexanes, we'll, we'll mainly focus on chair conformations as those are the most stable. You will see in your reading probably a mention of bowed conformations. And you should understand uh, why the chair conformer is more stable than the bowed conformer. And I'll actually let you uh, read about that in your textbook. Here, let's focus on drawing chair conformations and interconverting between the two ring flip versions. Now, in a previous video, we showed disubstituted cyclohexanes such as 1,2-dimethyl. Uh, but these were perspective drawings. Now let's create some new, new compounds to work with. What if we drew this molecule here and let's put a bromine here. Now this is a cyclohexane, so each carbon is tetrahedral. I have two in the plane, one forward, and then we're going to have an H back by default. And let's put maybe a, how about a chlorine here, and let's make it trans. We could make it either cis or trans. And so this is trans one comma four. I'm sorry, it's not a dibromo. It's going to be a trans uh, one four. Either way, one trans one bromo four chloro. cyclohexane, if we can get that written there. Okay. So we have this compound trans. It's pretty simple to draw that in a perspective drawing and understand the trans nature. But can we draw this in some other type of, or a specific conformation? that illustrates more of the bond angles, etc. And we do that with a chair conformation. In a chair, see if I can show this. This model is kind of large. Um, now the ring is not flat. If we drew a benzene ring, It is flat. There's a benzene ring model, and you see how it's flat on the paper. That's because each carbon is sp2 trigonal planar. And the plane of each carbon, they line up so each p orbital can then interact. And you have six p orbitals. You have a planar molecule. Yes, there's a pi system above and below that plane, but the sigma framework is all planar and thus flat. A cyclohexane, on the other hand, each carbon has two H's instead of one, and each carbon is thus sp3. And we get this. Now, right now, my model is flat, and it's a little larger. Okay, I also have two groups. Uh, let's first sort of sh show a model of this, okay? 
Let's see if I zoom out or something, if that'll help. Um, okay. A little smaller here. But I'm gonna make these I'm gonna make these uh, colors different since I use two different halogens. We'll have one red, the other one I'll make white, but I'm gonna make them trans because we drew our molecule trans. And so, we can still see that. Over here, you see, I've got my finger on the H, it's down low, and then let's call the bromine red. It's above. Over here, at the one, two, three, at the four position, chlorine, but it's down low. So these are opposite. Now, we make that ring flat, basically the, that, one's, that one's coming up, but over here it's going down. Either way, it's going down. Okay, so there's a model of the compound I drew, and I have it flat right now. Okay, but that's not how it exists, because if it's flat, and if we look down a bond, here. If you remember when we did confirmations of regular alkanes, if we look down this okay, carbon carbon bond, what do you see here? Well, I'm going to show you. This in the front is eclipsing this in the back. And over here, The H in the front is eclipsing. Okay, there it is in the back, but you see if I pull it up a little bit, it's eclipsing. Basically, if the ring is flat, all bonds all the way around, look at those. They're all eclipsing. Okay? You see how you can't see them in the back? You can see if I do like that. And that's a higher energy situation. Because of that, the ring puckers. It has a little bit of flexibility. And what happens is, one end sort of bends up, and the other, well, they both could bend up. And we'll look at, and that's a boat. Sort of like a European, uh, an Italian gondola, and I, I can't draw, but... It's sort of uh, like this. And you can see pictures much better than I can draw uh, of a boat in the water with the two ends sticking up. What you have here is though these bonds then come like this and they, they clash. Okay, here, it doesn't look like it's big enough but these two kind of come together and especially if we had bigger groups. Now this I'll change to cis. These groups would start clashing. And that's back up to A, largely why the chair conformer is more stable than the boat. In the boat, the groups clash. I'm gonna go back to trans because that's the molecule we're working with. We're still in a boat, okay. Let's go from flat. To get to chair, we pull one end up, but the other we go down. And I don't know that you can see this on the video. We'll try to draw, we'll draw a chair. But importantly, what I think you can see is now that I'm in the chair, now look that the front bond is no longer eclipsing the back ones. Now we have staggered. Okay? And so that's why the largely why the ring is not planar, 
but instead it, it adopts a chair confirmation to allow the bonds to be staggered. Now we can also add this. It also allows for better bond angles. Because from ninth grade geometry, if you look at a flat six-membered ring, you're, you're going to expect bond angles of 120 degrees, carbon, carbon, carbon. But we know that that carbon prefers bond angles of 109.5. And in the chair conformation, the angles are mo more closer to 109.5. That's probably difficult to show but that's certainly something we can note. Okay. How do we draw chair conformations? Uh, let's get a fresh piece of paper here. We're going to draw a chair conformation of... Uh, this was trans, the top one was bolded. Share confirmation of that. Okay, to draw a chair confirmation and to do it very precisely, not just quick hand like I did the boat on the previous page, we start with two lines parallel to each other and slanted like that. A little bit offset. And that's actually four carbons right there. Then we connect this carbon to this carbon with a bond, but it's going to go like that. And then we connect these two carbons with another carbon in the bonds, and this is going to go like that. And that's connected. Now sometimes when I draw this, it'll look better than others. And sometimes I'll say, yeah, that's no good, let's, let's do it again. Okay, that's a chair confirmation where one end is up. Let me, let me try to draw it quick, what it would be like quick-handed over here. Sort of like this, one end up, but the other end, and it's easier if I make this top longer, the other end is down. Now it's sort of like a chair and you're sitting here and your feet spill over here and then your head is up here and I'm the worst drawer in the world but you're sitting there and you can see better. Uh, I'm not even going to try. Imagine sitting there and you're back here and your legs spilling over here and that's why it's called a chair conformation. But to get it more precise, do it like I showed here. But next we have to put in the bonds because we always typically show the remaining bonds. Now the up carbons, which are here, here, and here, I'll point that out again, get straight up bonds, all right? Um, actually, we may need to just draw a chair of, without any substituents, let's call them all H's, then we'll get to that one. Okay, straight up carbons get straight up bonds, so and we have H's, all H's here, H, and here we draw that sort of like that. And in the down carbons here, here, and here get straight down bonds. H, H. Sometimes that's drawn short, kind of here, or sometimes it's extended and you put the H here. I probably prefer to draw it short and then straight down. And those six H's there 
are all called axial or axial H's. Now I'm going to tr switch colors here, see if that's useful. Now the carbon, again, each carbon here has two H's. We're doing just cyclohexane. Now the other bond on these is going to be equatorial or equatorial. And that bond is always parallel to not the carbon-carbon bond that's there, but the next one. So it's parallel not to this one, but the next one, it's, it's going to come off like that. The bond I drew is supposed to be parallel to that one there, or that one, either one. And that's the case all the way around. And so this one is going to be parallel not to that one, but that one. And so it's like that. And this one is parallel not to that one, but the next one. And so it's going to be like and this one. You can pause and try to draw it in yourself. It's parallel not to that bond, but the next one, or this way. Either way, and we get something that looks like and then this one parallel not to that bond, but the next one, and so it's See how that and that are parallel? Or that and that. You can go either way when you're looking for the bond to be parallel to. And this one is going to be parallel not to that, but that. So it's going to be now caution. This H is straight down. It is axial. If you don't draw this exactly right or think about it, you may think that's straight up. It's actually slanted just a bit. And so it's actually equatorial. Again, keep in mind, a down carbon gets a straight down bond. An up carbon gets a straight up. And the axials are straight up or down. where the equatorial are sort of around the side. Um, I'll just say side, but it's called equatorial like the equator sort of goes around the earth uh, where the, the straight up and straight down, those are called like the north and south pole. Okay, so that's actually not a bad looking chair conformation showing, showing the, all the H's. Of course, this is uh, this molecule here, just cyclohexane. Now, before we move on, importantly, we need to look at what's called a ring flip because when we back over here, we said we move one end up, one end down. But we can also go the other way. The other end can go up and the other end can go down. And that would be called a ring flip conformation. Let's do it on paper though. Here we're going to pull this end sort of down. And this end we're going to come up. All right. Now, to draw the, the, the ring flip conformation, we want to do very similar, but instead of doing like this, we want to go the other way and sort of mirror it and come like um, 
Now I don't do this one as much and so I might not do it quite as well. We'll talk about why. There's your four carbons and then these are connected up and these are connected by cutting. This is where I'm, I'm going to draw it right. Mm. It's a little pointy. But that's it. You see this end is down. Now let's put in the H's. Now importantly what we're going to state is, and I'll state it now, is when you do a ring flip all of your equatorial bonds move axial and all of your axial bonds move equatorial. Because now this H, it gets flipped down, it'll be straight down, and this H moves equatorial. If we do it with a model, again, hard to see, probably not adequate, but this is straight down. You can tell it's straight down because if we set the model down, the three straight down bonds are on the are on the desk. Okay. The three straight down ones. If you turn it over, you got the three straight up ones. <clears throat> so the red right now is axial. <clears throat> if we do a ring flip up and down. The red is now equatorial, and that one is straight up, and this one is equatorial. Okay, in the end, <clears throat> axials become equatorial, equatorials become axial. Let's draw these in again. So now all the red ones are going to be axial. I also want to label this as HA here, so we can identify that red H down here. That red H is now, where is, where is it at? Well, it's right here, and it's straight down. That's H, A. Just like we said up here, down carbons get straight down bonds. That one, this one, and this one. Up carbons get straight up. That would be straight up here and then each one gets a bond that's parallel to the next one I'll do these I'll go through these pretty quickly here and you can pause or just look at the end result I'm going to put an H here I'm going to put an H Oh, this one's going to be a little tight. It's going to be parallel to that. It's going to be here. So this is a ring flip and these are in equilibrium with each other and cyclohexane, these are equivalent because you got 6H is axial, 6H is equatorial, but you got the same thing here. This is a true equilibrium and this molecule is sort of going back and forth between chair conformations. Now there, there are other conformations called like twist boats, maybe a twist chair. We're not going to look at those, but your book may discuss those and sort of answer some questions of how does it exactly go from one to the other. Okay. What else can we say here? 
Now, importantly, well, let's do this before we move on. If I labeled this H here as HB, where's that one now? Well, it's axial here, we expect it to be equatorial. Of course, it's on the same carbon as HA. It's right here. And we see how this, this H is now equatorial. Here's a take home, though, if you want some free information. Uh, you're, you're probably not going to read this anywhere, but let me tell you, what you do, how you do this. In this example, here, what's consistent is HB is always above HA. That does not change. It's above it. Higher on the paper. Whenever you do a ring flip, that atom will still be above it. You see how it's still higher on the paper than HA? always the case. That can help you keep things straight. We'll refer to that again. Now, importantly, uh, next is to say which, which position is preferred. All right, equatorial. And particularly larger groups are going to prefer equatorial because there's more room in the equatorial position. The axial positions, I'm not going to try to show model, but these axial H's here actually, they sort of crowd each other. Now, H's are real small. If these were large groups, we could see that. There's more crowding, and this is called a, if that's one, this would be two and three. One, three diaxial interactions are bad, or can be bad. That's, that's what we have to look out for. And because of that, Larger groups prefer equatorial. Now, maybe we're ready to draw this compound now in a chair conformation, but more importantly, the most stable. What's the most stable chair conformation? I'm going to do that. We'll see what type of practice we need. We'll move ahead, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use this here. I'm going to draw me a chair, connect that, connect that. Now I'm going to ask, which is the larger group? And that's bromine. It's a larger halogen. I'm going to put it on my compound first. Where? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I tend to put things at this top corner first, and I'm going to put it equatorial. Why? Now that we put the bromine there, it matters where we put the chlorine, because the chlorine is one, two, three, four away. Bromine here, one, two, three, four away. Chlorine's going to go here. But does it go axial or equatorial? Now you may first think that we're going to put it larger group equatorial. Yeah, but that's we can't do that, right? We have to make sure that the compound is trans. We're drawing a trans compound.
and to, for it to be trans this is going to be uh, one up and one down compared to H. <clears throat> I'm going to put the H here. <clears throat> I'm going to draw in the two bonds here. One is straight down and one is like this. And I'm going to note that the bromine is down compared to H. When I say H, I'm talking about the H is there. Or maybe it's something else. It doesn't have to be H. It's, it's down compared to the other bond. Often it will be an H. Since it's down compared to the H, and we're dealing with a trans molecule, that means the chlorine needs to be up compared to the H. So over here we want the chlorine up compared to the H. And now we have trans whatever the name is. This is the same compound as that. And it turns out that both halogens are equatorial, but they did not have to be because, and this is the, the best conformer, we can address that. If I did a ring flip, the two chlorines would go from equatorial to what? To axial. And that would not be the best conformer. The one we drew is the best. Let's try this again. Let's, let's do a trans molecule. I'm sorry, not trans, but cis. Bromine and then chlorine. Okay, this is the cis version. We can get our cyclohexane. I'm going to start with the bromine because it's larger and I want to make sure that it's equatorial if possible. And let's put it equatorial. I always want you to draw in the H that's there on this carbon. Because by the way, I did not draw in the H's over here. This is suitable for me. I do want you to draw in the H's where any substituents are. Now, in some cases, I may want you to draw in all the H's. The instructions will tell you that. But sometimes it will be suitable just to have like this without all the H's drawn in. Okay, let's draw cis. Bromine's there. The chlorine is one, two, here. They're cis. The bromine is down compared to the H. So the chlorine needs to be down compared to the H. So both down or up. It could be either. But I drew that one down, so the chlorine is going to be down compared to H. So down here, well, this is a down, and that's like that. Down carbon gets down bond. Chlorine is going to be down. And that's going to be H. And there is the confirmation for that. Now this is actually the best confirmation because I started by putting the bromine in the best position. I knew I was going to end up with the best confirmation. If we do a ring flip, what will it look like?
I'm sorry, that's not a ring flip. Ring flip is going to be the other way. And this is going to be, this carbon is pulled down, this carbon is pulled up, that carbon is now here, straight down bond carbon in here, and that bromine is now here, and the H is here, and we see the bromine with equatorial to axial, and over here, this carbon went up in the air, and when you do that, that causes that causes these two carbons to kind of drop a little bit if you look at a model. So that's how they've been moved, but this carbon here is now this one. And now that's a straight up carbon, so it gets a straight up bond and then an equatorial. But the chlorine is always going to be below the H, remember? I stress that. I told you over here, HB is always above HA. The above below thing never changes even when you do ring flip. And so the H is still up compared to the chlorine. It's still up compared to the chlorine. But now the chlorine went from axial to equatorial and the H went from equatorial to axial. And here's the ring flip. It's also cis. How do we know it's cis? Because the bromine is below the H, the chlorine is below the H. Cis. But is this the best? And the answer is no, because bromine is your largest group, okay? It's larger. And larger groups prefer equatorial, okay? That's your best confirmation. But again, I kind of, I kind of got to the best because I started with the biggest group and I made sure it was equatorial. Okay. So there's a number of sort of free information tidbits there. Um, we can do more. Let's proceed by the outline. By the way, in terms of larger groups preferring equatorial, we actually have uh, data. If you look at methylcyclohexane, two conformers, two chair conformers, this one's favored by 18 over this one. 18 to 1 at equilibrium, the methyl being equatorial. Now the H's are not drawn here. If we drew it in, that'd be a straight down H. And this would be an equatorial H. All right. So that's favored. If we go to an even larger group, like a tert butyl group, the, the group being equatorial is favored much more because it's much larger. 4,800 to 1. So you don't need to know these numbers. That's just illustrating that large groups prefer equatorial. And as the group gets larger, it's going to prefer equatorial more and more. And so down here, this compound here, which, which conformer is preferred? Well, the T-butyl being equatorial would be preferred. If we do a ring flip, uh, the T-butyl goes axial and the methyl goes equatorial. Now, is this a cis or trans molecule? Don't look. Well, let's draw in the H's. The H is straight down. The H is equatorial. The methyl is above the H. The tert butyl is above the H. They're both ab above compared to the H. This is cis. This is cis over here because the H is here, the H is here. Both above the H, they're both above the H. It's the same molecule. Yes, this is cis.
Okay, there's some homework here to do. Identify each as cis or trans. I'll do the first one. Uh, the H here is straight up. The H here is straight down. Well, that's actually just like what we started with, but not cis, but these are, uh, that's trans. That's actually the molecule that we, that we worked with back over here, right? Um, and we actually have it drawn way back over here. You can do the others. And then this one asks you to go the other way. Go from this type of chair conformation to a more standard perspective drawing. Of course, this is a more standard type perspective drawing. So practice going back the other way. And then down here, show each of the following the lowest energy conformation. Of course, that's going to be a chair conformation because chair is always better than boat. And then answer the question, how many groups are equatorial in the best conformation? We could have asked that over here. Because in the best conformation over here, only one group was equatorial. The other substituent was axial. But in this case, when we did the best conformation, we had two groups equatorial. So I'll let you do both of these on your own. Keep in mind, though, that you have to be, draw the same compound. The bromines are next door to each other, so it's 1, 2. The fluorine is next to one of the bromines. The two bromines are cis, while the bromine and fluorine that are adjacent to each other are trans. So your, your chair conformation must be consistent with that. Okay, guys. I hope that helps. Uh, Try the uh, practice there and also, of course, your textbook, and we'll go from there. <laughs>